Graham is, is a firm proponent of the American system. So he supports central banking. He supports protective tariffs, especially now that by this time in the 1820s, New England has, has fully moved away from becoming sort of mercantile um, uh, you know, sh shipping interests to uh, supporting full on manufacturing. This is a lot of this is from the Boston Associates, many of whom uh, donated uh, to John Quincy Adams election. Uh, he's also a firm proponent of internal improvements to sort of bind the, 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 the country together. And so he starts off. So not only are a lot of people kind of upset at how that uh, election turned out, um, that the the overtime house election, and particularly at the speed, most people thought that it would be something that would take several rounds of of, of balloting. But what happened is basically Adams and Clay more or less uh, went to about um, uh, six uh, state delegations, and they were able to pry, you know, basically ply their um, the, the 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 relevant congressmen with uh, special favors and oh okay uh, if you if you vote for Adams then we'll do something for you etc. These are all these mini little corrupt deals and so then Adams becomes uh, president that way. So people are upset at that and then he as you mentioned he gives this speech is his 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 opening speech and he's talking about all the stuff the government's going to do and how they need to we need to fund national uh you know na national uh, um, uh observatory and and all these internal improvements and he has this famous line i believe it's it's something along the lines of um liberty is power he says that so it's like he's he's he's, he's contradicting the liberty versus power theory um, and this caused uh, Jackson many years later in uh, in a veto. He he said money is power, which is I, I like that. He's sort of commenting on old old John Quincy Adams get get getting him after all those years. And so a lot of people were upset at that. So Adams starts off his administration basically realizing that he doesn't have much of uh, at least a significant part of Congress's support. People are upset at him. Um, in 1826, he loses um, the, the 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 he loses the midterm elections to sort of this rising Jacksonian coalition. This is the first time that the party in power had lost control of Congress uh, or the sitting president had in in, in in an interim election. So this is this is this is pretty big. And uh, Adams and Clay, they they they're, they're working together, uh, trying to continue to enact their their American system. But the problem is, uh, Jackson's upset, as you mentioned. Jackson was, was furious at this. He thought that this was the ultimate uh, treachery. He had this famous line, something along the lines of, he "said the, the Judas of the West has closed the contract and has received this thirty pieces of silver. Uh, his end will be the same." So he's basically like, "I'm taking you out, Clay." You're, you're like, how dare you did you, you 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 do this to me? And I'm taking you out, Adams, uh, as as well. And so you've got Jackson, who's very upset. He wants to run in 1828. And Martin Van Buren uh, real recognizes a profit opportunity because he says, look, Jackson, uh, his you know Jackson, your campaign in 1824 was mainly based off of your personal popularity. Why don't we? Uh, bring you under the banner of the old Republican creed. Uh, you're sympathetic to it. Uh, you you were very close with Nathaniel Macon of North Carolina, one of those old Republicans of, of, of years past. Uh, you're anti-bank, anti-central banking, anti-debt, uh, limited government man yourself. Uh, why don't we run uh, your campaign on these principles, which will get even more people interested? So Van Buren starts to embark upon this really, really uh, tough, but I would say, and Murray Rothbard would say as well, a uh, heroic um, uh, 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 process of organizing this entirely new coalition and doing it in, in, in two years. So the Republicans back in the 1790s, they had started to organize in the mid 1790s. Jefferson ran uh, in 1796. He lost that. Then they really started to organize in 1800, and then they won that. Uh, Van Buren basically does this all within one election cycle, and so he's able to uh, deliver Jackson the victory. And so this is this is a very important thing that I don't think a lot of people understand, uh, because in order to succeed in politics, you have to have the right 
political infrastructure. You have to have the right uh, party system. And Van Buren recognizes this. He recognizes the need to build coalitions. He recognizes the need to uh, you know bring all of these people together under the banner of Jackson and you know fighting the American system, et cetera. And this is exactly what he does. So he starts to enlist all of the various um, uh, all of the various factions, and he brings them under the banner of Jackson. So Murray Rothbard always spoke very highly about Van Buren's efforts. He was very influenced by Robert Ramini, a Jacksonian historian. And I think that Martin Van Buren's uh, creation of this new party is extremely important, um, particularly because it's still the modern Democratic Party. The same party organization, the Democrats now, uh, that was basically created by Van Buren. Now, the party stood for very different things. In fact, probably like a complete 180. It was supposed to be a reform party designed to uh, limit government. But, you know, the creation of that party is absolutely Van Buren's doing, and he should get an enormous credit for that. Mm -hmm.